Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Pete Yorsky, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video, we're going to take a look at Drupal 7 node references. Uh, in Drupal 6, Mustard Seed Media had a great video podcast that shows you how to use node references. I uh, definitely recommend you check it out if you're using Drupal 6 uh, podcast slash episode 37 at mustardseedmedia.com. But there's been a couple changes to the Drupal 7 system, and uh, I was trying to play with it this weekend and had uh, a couple troubles, so just wanted to provide this tutorial for anyone else that's in a similar boat. So let's dive right into it. First things first, um, this is going to be based upon uh, the Drupal 6 version, so I'm assuming that you know and are familiar with node references. Um, if not, you should be able to pick things up, but uh, we're going to kind of dive right into it. So I've created two content types. Uh, those types are an event and a registration. And you'll see I've got two events right here. And the whole idea is when somebody clicks on the Toronto Marathon, there will be a link on that page for them to immediately register for the event. And the two content types will be linked together. Um, so there are a couple modules that we need. Uh, and these have changed in Drupal 7. So let's go ahead and first thing we're going to do is got to get, actually we'll get the node reference underscore URL. And just using Drush to download the modules. Great. The second one that we need is references. Great, so if you're familiar with uh, Drupal 6 node references, you'll know that um, node reference URL hasn't changed. The, this references module, this is new. Um, because CCK was brought into Drupal 7, that uh, this module itself has refer, uh, replaced the node reference module. So uh, that's where that's coming up. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and we'll go to our modules and we'll enable the, uh, the different modules that we need. If we scroll down, We're going to need node reference, node reference widget, references, and we'll enable user references, but we're not going to use that. That's just in the event that you want to uh, reference back to a user. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that. Great. So I'm just going to close up my uh, window must receive media. Definitely recommend you check that out. Now let's go ahead and we'll go to our content types. And we'll go to registration and manage fields. And you'll see when we get uh, we get to this page, I've got two fields. I've got the name and I've got an email. So I'm going to add a third, and this is going to be um, uh, event, right? And we're going to say this is the uh, node reference event. And we go to our drop down. You'll see we have a node reference box right here now, and we're going to reference from URL. That's going to make it automatic. If we didn't enable the node reference uh, widget this wouldn't be here and you would uh, a user would be choosing what they're actually uh, signing up for so if they saw a Toronto Marathon and Taste the Danforth they'd have to choose that what this is going to allow them to do is when they're looking at Toronto Marathon automatically click register the system will know that they're coming from Toronto Marathon and it'll link the two that way uh, it just saves the user an extra step so uh, we've got a couple things here content types that can be referenced we want them to reference an event um, if you had views you could uh, list your views here and associate them that way which is pretty neat. I haven't done it, but uh, it allows you to create a pretty versatile system. And we're getting error here. I don't think that's, that should be okay. Uh, so event, uh, we're gonna use the autocomplete widget. Or I'm sorry, the fallback behavior is gonna be a select, li uh, select list. So if a user gets to the registration page without having gone through an event page, uh, they'll just see all the events and choose which one they're, they're uh, signing up for. So, this is going to be a required field. Uh, we don't need to put any help text in. And we're only going to use this on, we'll put it on a teaser as well. So they have the both link. So sign up for this, this event. Um, just provide your email and name to sign up. Okay, and we'll have them go back to the referenced node and we'll hit save. So if you're familiar with the Drupal 6 version, uh, Mustard Stevenia did uh, pretty much the exact same thing up until now. So let's go into Toronto Marathon and you'll see we have registered for this event and they're brought to our registration page. So that's good, no changes there. And if we go to home, just make sure we should see it in the uh, teaser view as well. So there's register for this event. Perfect. Now where there's a little bit of a change is in the views handling. So. Uh, it's great if somebody registers for this event, but we want to be able to see that. So let's say site uh, admins want to be able to see who's all registered for the Toronto Marathon. Ideally, they could click on Toronto Marathon, and being a site administrator, they'd see a list down here. So let's go ahead and we'll register for this. 
And Peter Jaworski. And we'll just click save. And you'll see now we somebody's registered, but we don't really know how. We don't have any view to see how uh, how many people have done that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a view to actually attach all the people that have registered to that node. So we're not going to create a page. I'm going to call this is uh, event registrations and. Um, normally you put in a description, I'm not going to, just for the sake of time. And I should have chose up my content type, that's okay, I can do it right here. So we just want to choose our content type, and that is equal to, we want these to be registrations. Okay, uh, so we'll just include the, uh, the title, which will be the name. So this is where we need to get another module, a new module in Drupal 7, which replaced views attached, and the module is called Eva. So we'll get this through Drush and run into a problem. So just bear with me for a second. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to modules, open this in a new tab. I'm going to refresh. Actually, we'll refresh after. Enable Eva Entity Views Attachment, and with that closed, we go back. We're going to have to refresh our view because we're going to need to bring in the fact that we have the new module enabled. So now we're going to go ahead and click Add. And you'll see we have Entity Content and that's brought in by the Eva module, courtesy of Lullabot. Uh, so now when we go to this, we go to Advanced, and you'll see we have some Entity Content type uh, content settings here. So First one, we're going to choose entity type. It's going to be content, or node rather, sorry. Hit apply. Then bundles. It's going to attach to events. And the arguments is going to be use the ID from the entity view is attached to. So we'll go ahead and hit apply. And now we have to add a contextual filter. So this is going to be field and you're going to choose your reference. So we've got the field node reference event. That's our node reference field, NID. We'll go ahead and we'll add that. Now, when the filter is not in the URL, we are going to provide the default. And it's going to be content ID from the URL. A couple of people have had issues with uh, actually um, configuring the contextual field. I, find, I found it didn't work for me if I didn't include content ID from URL. Um, anything else, I got errors. Other people haven't had that issue. So um, play around with it, test it out, see what works for you. I find, or I found it would not work for me if I didn't have content ID from URL. So I recommend using that. Um, as you see, it works here in the tutorial. So uh, try that out. So now when we scroll down, and I believe it's two. There we go. We see our registration for that specific note. If we go to three, which we have not signed up for, we don't get any. So well, that's perfect. Everything's looking good. So we, what we're going to do just before we go is we're going to choose a table just to make it look a little bit nicer. Yep. Go ahead and hit apply. And we're going to add one more field. We've got our email field. Contacts, email. And one thing I want to do is I want to remove. Don't need to link that to its page. Um, so we're all good. We go ahead and we hit save up the top here and close that. I'm going to go back to my home page and if I go to the Toronto Marathon we didn't sign up for the Toronto Marathon. If I go to the Taste of the Danforth I didn't sign up for that either. That is because I have to flush all caches. This is an issue with the EVA module and it's been documented as an issue um, so you'll see it in the preview but if you don't clear your caches you will not see it on your specific content. So if you just experienced the same issue I did, flush your caches. There we go. We now have our, our table with an email. Shows everybody that's registered. So uh, take care and thanks for watching.